Hey and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a book review of In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. So I got this book as an arc through NetGalley and I will put the day that it comes out here because I'm not positive what day that is um, but I'll put it up here. So I did get this as an arc and I read it last weekend so I thought I would give my opinions on it because I absolutely adored House on the Cerulean Sea by him and I also liked The Whispering Door. I think that's, that's what the second, the other one is called. But I liked both of those books and so I was really excited about this. This is one of my anticipated reads for 2023. So I had very high hopes going into this book and you'll see I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would but I still think that it's a really good book and I do still think that majority of people will enjoy this book. So I'm going to tell you what it's about and then I'll explain kind of what I liked about it or what I think you may like about it and then I'll tell you kind of some of my issues with it. So I didn't want to spoil anything so I've pulled up on Goodreads um, the synopsis for this book which the synopsis goes into events that are like halfway through the book but ultimately this is kind of what uh, the synopsis is and I'm gonna try and put this in my own words. We have three robots and a human who live kind of in a treehouse in the forest. Um, so we have the inventor android Giovanni which is the father and then we have Nurse Ratchet who is a nursing robot. We have Rambo who is a vacuum <laughs> And then we have Victor, who is a human. They basically are like hidden away in the forest, safe from the dangers of the world, which immediately you're not really going to understand until you start reading the book. And one day, Nurse Ratchet, Rambo, and Victor come across a damaged android, Hap, who he takes back to his house and he repairs and brings him essentially back to life after he has a dead battery. With this, unwillingly, they alert other robots from Giovanni, Gio's former life of where they are and so they start to come after them. Gio will be captured and they take him back to the city of Electric Dreams and this starts their journey of going to essentially save him. Um, so they're journeying through this world that Victor has never really seen or been a part of. He's lived in the forest in this treehouse his whole life and so it's their journey to try and get him back and it's all about how can you accept betrayal and forgiveness and finding love in ways that may be a little uh, different? And so that's kind of what it's about. At least that's the synopsis. I will say that like part of that synopsis doesn't even happen until like 50% of the way through the book. So the things that I liked is what, where I will start just because... I don't want to start with the bad. So I found that almost all of the characters were really likable. Um, Nurse Ratchet is absolutely hilarious. She's kind of sociopathic, makes a lot of comments about murdering people. And it's, it's very funny. She makes a lot of inappropriate comments as well and um, that make the others uncomfortable. So she was like the comedic relief of the whole thing. I really enjoyed all of her... Um, dialogue within the book and this is like a pretty humor filled book just through the dialogue which is obviously um fun and then we also had Rambo who is a vacuum and he loves to clean he is like over excited about everything hopeful kind of the opposite of Nurse Ratchet but he's also scared of everything um, and so him and Nurse Ratchet kind of going back and forth was like a highlight in this book they were so funny um, and Victor was just kind of the one there to steady them and they all kind of show this this loyalty to Victor um, that's really cute because they're like essentially a little family like a little they've made a, a family with these robots and this human and then there's Hap and Hap is back and forth because you want to love him because he is so in the beginning naive and all he wants to do is to help and protect even if that's not what he was made for um so him and victor's relationship he kind of like almost imprints on victor um is 
kind of a main focus in this book and their relationship is very heartwarming and sweet um, and they have a big journey that they go on emotionally and like mentally with each other I feel like um, and he is kind of part of that like forgiveness trope as well as the forgiveness trope between uh, Victor and his father. So, um, I think that the characters are all hilarious and likable and very entertaining. I think that they are probably the best part of this book and I really enjoyed them. Also their relationships with each other are honestly pretty good like they're fun to read about and they're heartwarming and I enjoyed the dynamic between the entire group. The plot <laughs> is where I start to have some not even issues because I think realistically my biggest issue was I did not when I read this book I don't think that it was really like the time for me to read this book. I think that if I have read this book in a different time I probably would have enjoyed it much more because there are parts of this book that I know if I had like felt fully invested I probably would have cried I would have loved it I would have been so attached but there was just something about it that I could not fully invest myself into the book I didn't get super attached to anyone um, and at some point it was just like I was reading it because I needed to finish it. I don't know if it was the pressure of I've like been running out of time on finishing this arc, which I think honestly has a lot to do with it, that I was feeling like the pressure to read it. I feel like if I had picked it up not as an arc just because I wanted to and there was no pressure there for me to finish it, I would have enjoyed it a lot more. So I do think like it's still very enjoyable and I probably would have absolutely adored it if I had read it at a different time. But because of that... I feel like the first 48% of this book was very slow for me. It's a lot of setup. There's not much happening. The first major plot point doesn't happen until like almost 50% of the way. There are plot points, but like the big one doesn't happen until halfway through the book. And then it feels like the second half of the book was a little bit almost rushed, where I feel like the first half could have been shortened a bit. So there's that. Um, but their journey to go get Geo back was entertaining. We see multiple people along the way um, who are both helpful and not helpful. Um, and you really get to see how this society is built um, with all of these androids and the world they're living in that Victor has been kind of sheltered from. And he has not necessarily been lied to, but he does not know the extent of everything and all the, the history even behind him. Um, until this journey happens so those like it is good that part the second half of the book I think was much better and it was faster and there was just a lot more happening than the first half of the book but at the same time if it's boring for 50% of the way or I was not attached for 50% of the way like it was hard for me not to just quit there was there was points where I thought I was just not gonna finish it and I'm glad I did because it does get better, but I personally just felt like it was very slow in the beginning. Um, so I ended up writing this book three stars because of that. I could not get fully invested. And there were moments at the end of this book that I thought to myself, oh, I feel like I should feel something right now. Like this is a big moment, but I didn't because I didn't really get attached to the characters. Um, but I think that's a me thing. I think there are plenty of people who will read this and absolutely adore it and love it and get attached to those characters and if you do get attached to them I think that it will be a very um, worthwhile read and you will enjoy it a lot. You may even rate it five stars. Um, personally that just didn't happen for me. I will say I did love the way that it's still every time TJ Quinn writes a book they have these warm comforting feelings. Um, I always say this when I talk about House of Resiliency. I say it just makes you feel warm inside and like fuzzy inside and that's why I've recommended it to people because I've never felt more happy reading a book and just like warm and hopeful inside than I read that book and it's kind of a theme amongst his books and that's the same with this one as well so I was really glad to like see that it still gives those same feelings um, as his other books. This is technically fantasy science fiction, which may be another reason I wasn't super into it. There's a lot of robots 
and building things and that's not my biggest you know vibe so I think that may have also just had to do with it a little bit um, but if you like science fiction fantasy then you probably would enjoy this book as well. Overall I think the things that this book does really well are honestly I thought it had pretty good world building it just takes you a while to learn it as you're learning it through another character. It has great banter. Like, I mean, that is like the number one thing this book has is banter. It is so good. These characters are hilarious and just like witty and the things they say. I mean, I laughed multiple times at it just because these characters are just so good. The characters are the best part and I don't even... It makes me sad that I didn't get attached to any single one of them enough to like feel something towards the end of it but I did still really enjoy their characters and I think that you may get attached if you read this book. I know a lot of people loved it um, that have already read it so go into it knowing that like it's got great banner like chef's kiss banter banner banter um that's like one of the best things it has and like with that there's very good relationship dynamics between all of these characters. The characters are the best part okay the plot may have been lacking a little bit but the characters are good um and I think that if the plot had been quicker or even just I don't know I feel like if the plot had been a little bit better I would have loved it more because the characters are so good but the plot was lacking for me just a tad bit since I'm sitting in the middle with three stars I do think you could go either way and I'm sorry if you hear my dog barking um you're either going to love this or you're just going to think it's okay. I, I don't think it's as good as his other two books that I have read personally. I think that those two books made me have higher expectations for this book than maybe I should have. Um, but I do still think it's good. It's just hard when you're comparing it to other books by him that I loved so much um, that they just didn't meet that standard for me personally. Um, obviously, this is all my own opinion. But I will say... Despite this, I still recommend it. I do think that you should give it a shot and pick it up um, and try it out for yourself and see what you think about the book because I think it's worth giving a shot just because everyone likes different things and I think that the plot still leaves room for you falling in love with these characters and feeling really emotional and having your heart kind of opened up to all of them. Um, through it and I think that there is a really good theme amongst the whole thing of forgiveness and love and loyalty and and friendship and family essentially and what you'll you'll do for each other and how you decide who is family and um, where your like loyalties lie kind of thing so I think that overall and I feel like it also has a really good theme or meaning um, message behind it of like choosing who you want to be you and not letting your past define you. You could have been something before, but if you've changed and want to be something different, uh, you get to choose your own fate and you get to choose who you are and what you make of your life. And so that is like a huge thing in this book is like choosing to be your own person and choosing the life you want for yourself. And I thought that was maybe not impactful to me because I didn't like and really get sucked into the story, but I think that that's a, an important um, message to send and I think that for a lot of people it will impact them a lot so um, I did really enjoy that that was like a theme in this book as well. It has a great theme, it has a great meaning message behind it, it has great characters and it has an okay plot so I think that um, if those are things you're looking for you will definitely enjoy it. I don't want to go give any spoilers because this book is not even out yet but when it does come out, definitely consider picking it up, especially if you loved his other two books. But maybe go in knowing that it's not, it may not be the same level of amazing that his other two books were, but it's still a good book. Um, and I also loved the fact that all of the beginnings of these like parts, because it's divided into parts and chapters, has quotes from Pinocchio. And I would love to know, once everyone has it out, what you would say about this book as well. So, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!